Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT surgeon that works for the NHS. Now, a lot of you know me as someone who helps people with snoring and sleep apnea on the NHS, but I also help people with ear problems. I'm an otologist. And what that means is that I deal with people who have problems with their ears, as well as a nose and throat, I'm an ENT surgeon, but particularly uh, my specialty is about looking after people with ears. I want to tell you about a disease called cholesteatoma. Now, for some reason, a lot of people don't know about this, but actually it's quite common. And so I want to explain what a cholesteatoma is, how it starts, how it's formed, why it's a problem, and how well, roughly, sort of very gently, I'm gonna tell you how we treat it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is explain how we think cholesteatoma form. It's all based on a clever transport system that's within the ear canal. The surface lining of the ear Drum are cells that grow out from the eardrum and along the canal wall. As these cells migrate along the canal wall, it drags the ear wax with it. This then creates a thin layer of wax which lines the ear canal and protects it from infections. In the vast majority of people, this system works very well and doesn't cause any real problems. Occasionally, however, the eardrum can become distorted. A common example of this is when you're on an aeroplane and you need to pop your ears to be able to hear properly. An extreme example of this is when the eardrum is sucked right back and forms what is called a retraction pocket. Now on the whole this doesn't cause many problems, it just takes a bit longer for the cells to migrate around it to the ear canal. However problems may arise when the eardrum is severely retracted, particularly when it curls around a corner. These migrating cells try very hard to get out of this little cave, but sometimes get lost and end up going round and round in circles in desperation to get out of the ear canal. That mass is what we call a cholesteatoma. So now you know why people get a cholesteatoma, what I want to do now is explain why it's such a big deal. So what if you've got this thing that's growing inside your ear? The reason is, is it's in a very sort of sensitive area. And I'll go back to a picture here. This time I'm looking directly through the ear hole, looking at the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. So you can see what's going on in that area. Another drawing, I'm afraid. So the first thing I need to do is draw an eardrum. And if you want to see what a real life eardrum looks like, you can look at the video where I examine my own ear and I'll leave a link for it above. The eardrum is connected to three bones of hearing known as the malleus, incus and stapes, although some people call it the hammer, anvil and stirrup. These three bones connect the eardrum to the cochlea. The cochlea looks like a seashell. It's actually where all the inner hair cells and nerves go to the brain. You can't see the cochlea in this diagram, but what you can see is the entrance and exit, which is known as the oval window and the round window. Cholesitoma Tend to form in the nooks and crannies around these bones of hearing. And when the cholesteatoma gets large enough, it can damage these bones of hearing, which disconnects the eardrum from the cochlea. So this means when sound hits the eardrum, that sound is not transmitted to the cochlea and therefore you can't hear. So when this happens, we have to reconnect these bones, or if they're severely damaged, replace them all together with new artificial bones. But sometimes the cholesteatoma could go through that area and cause permanent nerve damage to that area. So you could lose your he hearing permanently. Now I'm going to add some more detail to this diagram. There are two nerves I want to tell you about. This nerve here coming around the corner just beneath the bones of hearing is known as the facial nerve. A tiny branch off the facial nerve is called the corda tympani and that travels across the eardrum. Again, if you look at that video where I examine my own ear, you'll see this nerve crossing my eardrum. Now the facial nerve, unsurprisingly, controls the muscles of expression in your face. If that nerve is damaged, you can't move this side of your face. It's a bit like having a stroke. One side of your face will be drooped down like this and you won't be able to move it. There is a nerve that comes off that facial nerve called the corda tympani. That nerve goes to this side of your tongue or whatever side. If this is this side, it goes to this side of your tongue and that controls taste on that side of your tongue. Now if you lose taste sensation on one side of your tongue, you get a sort of funny like a metallic taste on one side. It's a bit like biting on a copper coin or something like that. You sort of taste something there. And generally that sensation goes away with time, but can cause problems if you're a wine taster or a chef or something like that. A lot of people know that the ear also has a balance centre in it. The balance centre is roughly here, and it looks like three circular loops. That's why they're called the semicircular canals, and I describe how they work in another video, which I'll link above. Now, the bone around the semicircular canals is the toughest, sort of densest bone in the body, but even then, cholesterol can go into that area and, and eat it up and cause problems. Now, typically, you'd notice that if you go from a warm house and go out into the cold, you might feel a bit dizzy. If you ask someone to look in your eyes when you're dizzy, you'd see your eyes sort of flicking backwards and forwards. Another test, what you could do is push like this on the this part of your ear, what we call the tragus, and push it into your ear, or even put your finger into it and push quite hard. What that does is cause a bit of pressure in your ear that can set off this type of dizziness. If someone looks at your eyes when you do this, you'll see your eyes flicking backwards and forwards, and that shows that you might have this problem as well, or some something similar to that. These are signs that are really important to go and see your doctor about. 
So to complete this picture, now I'm going to draw in the wall between the ear and the brain, and it often surprises people how close the brain is to the ear. Behind the ear is a large bone known as the mastoid bone. This has a honeycomb appearance, and within it there's a very large vein called the sigmoid sinus, but actually this is just the jugular vein coming up into the brain. So coming back to cholesteatoma, they normally form in this area here, which we call the attic area. Here it damages the bones of hearing, but can spread down into the mastoid and along the wall of the brain. It can also grow forward, further risking the facial nerve, or grow down onto the stapes or stirrup area, causing damage possibly to the corda tympani. When cholesteatoma get very large, they can grow forwards into the eustachian tube and heading towards the nose. So the next question normally is, how do I know if I've got a cholesteatoma or not? Often these are very, very small and don't have any symptoms at all. And the first thing people might notice if they look in your ear is that your area that's been sucked back in, what we call a pocket in your eardrum, like we drew at the start. Now that has literally no symptoms at all in many people, but you can notice a slight difference in hearing in one side or the other. When a cholesteatoma starts causing damage to the surrounding area, you can get further hearing loss. You tend to get a lot of discharge from your ear. It's not often very painful. You just seem to get an awful lot of discharge so no matter how many drops you take it doesn't seem to get rid of that infection. If you're going back and forth to your family doctor or GP you're asking for drops to get rid of this discharge and they say well I can't really see anything because it's just full of pus and things like that and, and the infection isn't really going it may be worth seeing an ENT surgeon just to check in particularly in that top corner that I was telling you about where cholesteatoma start forming and really the earlier you catch this thing the easier it is to fix it because very small cholesterol, I mean, you can almost pick out almost when they become very, very big, when they go down into the mastoid bone down here or go forward into that eustachian tube area, it becomes so big that you need a much bigger operation to remove it because you need to be careful you don't damage anything else as well. Now there are lots of different ways of fixing cholesteatoma. All of them normally require an operation and some of them require uh, an incision behind your ear underneath the hairline or through the ear hole with an endoscope or keyhole surgery, sometimes with a laser, without laser. Uh, there's leaving a big hole in your ear or reconstructing the wall. There's all sorts of things. And personally, I think they've all got their pros and cons. Uh, and one size I don't think fits all. I think you should tailor the operation to the person in front of you and the, the, the mass that you have in front of you. Uh, and in some operations, I go look actually all we need to do is this and some of oh, we have to do all of this thinking about the hearing thinking about the nerve all of this is very important and talking to your surgeon about this and telling them look this is what really matters to me please just fix it this way and I don't want to have another operation later there's all sorts of pros and cons to all of these operations so talk to him try and, or, or her and understand what the options are and then you can sort of model your way through and work out what's the best thing for you so as I said at the start, cholesterol isn't a cancer or some sort of uh, tumour where the cells are changing and multiplying. This is just a normal mechanism that's gone slightly wrong. But importantly, it can cause damage a bit like a tumour where it can damage the structures around it. So the earlier you pick up one of these things, the better. Often you can wait several weeks, months before you pick up on it. So I wouldn't be too worried if, oh no, I, I should have picked up on this earlier. Don't worry about it. Just see your ENT surgeon. We can deal with most things. Sometimes it takes 10 years before people end up seeing their ENT ENT surgeon, we can still fix it. I really hope that some of you out there who are watching this video and have these symptoms or have this problem of discharging ear can now go and see an ENT surgeon or their family doctor just to check that top corner and make sure there's nothing going on there. If they say that there's just a little bit of wax there or crust there, do need to make sure that that gets taken off. Use a proper ear cleaning clinic or something like that. Pull away that wax to make sure there's nothing growing behind it because sometimes wax in that area is actually hiding a cholesterol underneath it. So don't get, don't let anyone get fooled by that. Eventually, I will also show you videos of how these cholesterol, what they look like, how they're removed. And if I can help one person not have a problem with cholesterol or see a doctor very early and have a smaller operation and retain their hearing long term, that would make me feel great. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.